In this tutorial, I intend to cover the important XLite files and how you can keep organized. Now, just a caveat to this, you're not fixed to this, to this way of doing things. This is how I keep organized. So you can take the bits that are useful to you and throw the rest away. But for now, let's look at the your show folder, XLite show folder. And I'll cover some of the files that are created by XLites and I'll explain some that I create. So if we actually look at the files at the bottom first before we start with the folders, you notice we've got an XLites key binding XML. What this does, if you've changed any keyboard shortcuts and things in XLites, that is all stored within this file. So there you go. This one obviously stores all of your network settings, your controllers, etc. And then the final one is a really important one as well. This stores all of the information about your layout, your props, uh, and all of your sub models, etc. etc. So these are key files. And you can see how important that RGBFX one is by the fact we've got an XBKP. And when you see that, you know that this is a backup file. So this is a backup file of the RGB effects. So as I go down, I'm going to go down the order and I'll explain which file folders are mine and which are built into X lights and why I do them. So this is one I created. So I put all of my images and uh, video files, audio files in their own directory so I can keep this folder structure nice and clean. So I create one called animated GIFs. So these are all, you know, images that are animated like this. So you can see this is a, an animated image. So I put those in animated GIFs. Now, the reason I put the things in individual folders and not in the folders of the sequence that created them, etc., is a lot of the times you would want to use, you know, say a bell image in multiple sequences. So by putting it in one central repository, all of your sequences can access it without having duplication. So move on. I then also create one called audio files. And here I have all of the audio files of my sequences. And I try to keep a, a naming convention. So I have the name of the track and the artist. This is important because you may have two different versions of a particular song that one may be an instrumental, one may by a different artist, and this allows you to differentiate. And also, if you're going to use an FM transmitter, you must make sure that if we look in properties here, that you set the title and the artist in the metadata. This will allow the FM transmitter to transmit that information to people who have an RDS receiver in their car. Moving back, backup. This is the default location where backups happen of your configuration. So if I go into one, you can see those important files that I mentioned at the start, key bindings, networks, and also the backup of the RGB effects are all stored in these folders by date. So you can, you know, if you make a mistake, you can go back. Uh, and you also see there's backup information for particular sequences in there as well. Uh, this is an example of why it's important to keep your root folder clean so you don't get this full of uh, sequence files that you may want to back up separately. Now we've got one called buffers. Now you, you may not have this folder created yet. What this is, is when you actually create in X lights, some of these entries for the buffer, and then you save them, it copies them into this. This allows you to share these files, but it's just a straight user readable file that stores information about the particular value curves and coordinates, etc. So here you can see I've got two in there. So that is the buffers folder. Color curves is a similar one. If uh, 
if you was going to create your own uh, here, you was going to, I'll, I'll create one now. Let you say I created my own and I wanted it to, wanted to use it in future. I can export and I'll just call this test. And then I would put it in my color curves folder. And then if I ever want to reuse that, I can easily load that one in. Downloaded sequences. This is just one I created. If I download a sequence from someone else or, uh, or purchase a sequence, if I, I could copy them to the downloaded sequence folder just to keep them all together. And then I'll purge that uh, over time. Uh, you know, when I no longer need the sequence or I've imported it and configured it to my layout and I no longer need it. Same with things like downloaded faces. Yeah, so in here, I would store all things like faces that I've, you know, downloaded. But later on, I would move those to the appropriate image folder that I've created. There's also an extra folder there for downloads. So if there's any files, you know, any shared elements that I want to keep, I'll put them in downloads. And then you see here, I have got a separate folder for faces. Uh, so you saw there the downloaded ones. Once I'm happy that I want to keep them, I'll put them into faces and I'll give them a name just to encapsulate all of the information within a nice folder structure. Next one, this is a, a personal choice of yours. FSEQ files. These are the files that, you know, your controller actually understands. This is the information that will be sent to the pixels. So there's no uh, images in here. There's no video. However, there are, the, there are the coordinates and the lights that should be switched on that actually make those videos in your show. So... This is one of the files that you will be uploading to your controller, you know, to, or to your FPP, along with the audio file. So those are the two files, an FS, EQ, and the audio file. And you can see I've separated this out. By default, this would be stored along with the sequence. But if you go into your settings within Xlights, sequences, you see there's an option here of storing the FSEQ files in their own folder. So you just untick this and you can specify your own folder. So I think that keeps it much cleaner because when you want to upload the F FSEQ files, they're all in a folder on their own, not mixed in with all of your sequences. So that's why I do that. Moving back to the folders. Images, so yeah, so I create all my static images like JPEGs, PNGs, etc. I store here. This one's a mistake. I'll delete that one now. Uh, so anytime I need an image in a sequence, I can just go here and use this. Imported media. This is one that's automatically created uh, by Xlights when it imports a sequence using the new method. I leave it there for temporary purposes, but once I am finished editing a sequence that I've imported, I will move all the appropriate files to my own locations and just remap those in the sequence just to keep it clean. And then eventually this will be purged and deleted. Palettes. This is another one that uh, if you create your own palette here, so you imagine you've You've set some colors that you really like and some color curves and all these type of things. What you can do, uh, you have the option to save these. Yeah. And you can see here a new palette has been created and X Lights will load that up and include it in the list here. Moving on, particles. This is just a folder I've created for any particle effects that I, I've created. So these are video files that you know can be placed on a matrix or a mega tree or any of your props uh, for a nice background effect. So 
that's not a default X lights one. It's just one I use to keep all of those particular types of effects together. The next one is presets. So if you've done, if you've created any presets or downloaded any presets, they will all be stored here. And obviously they are accessed via the preset dialog by right clicking on your timeline. All of the presets are in here. So that is your presets. Next one is a render cache. So when you click on this render button here, files are generated and you can see there is a render cache created for all of the different sequences. So you can see here. So this is just where information is buffered while it's generating the files that X lights need to display your show. So generally you've no need to come in here. Sequences, yeah, by default, X lights may store your sequences in the show folder root. I prefer to keep those separately within sequences. Okay, and you'll see two files in here. You'll see an XSQ file. That is the sequence itself. That is what you're going to load. And then you'll see one here, XBKP. And if you remember, that is a backup file. So this is a backup of this particular file. Now I've just copied all these in here. So there's no backups at the moment. What once I load and start playing with them, backups will be generated for all of these. So you can see the sequence and the backup all in the sequences folder. Next one is shaders. So when you add a shader effect like this, all of the shaders are stored in the shaders folder. And if you download any new sh uh, shaders, they will automatically be copied to that shaders folder. Next one, value curves. Okay, so if you create some value curves, so imagine if I, and I'll just drop any random effect on here. Imagine I created a value curve for this particular item. You know, I did my own custom one. This type of thing. If I was to export this, I could export that value curve and save it in the value curves folder. Or it can be used for the generate 2D path. When you generate, it will create two value curves for X and Y locations, and those will can be saved in the value curves. And you can see I've got two there. These set of curves for X and Y actually write my name, uh, the path of my name. That's the value curves. Final one here is the X schedule data. So if you're using X scheduler, this is an important one for you. This will store all the data related to X schedule. So that covers the show folder. And remember you can create multiple show folders. Yeah, so this could be your Christmas show folder. You could have another one for Halloween, which would, you know, you could have Halloween type images and audio files and kept entirely separate. What I do not recommend you do is don't put any dates on things like show folders and things like that. You know, try to stick dateless. Uh, then, you know, you're not having to change, you know, file structure names when a new year comes around. Uh, but like I say, all of this is just the way I do things. It's entirely up to you. So have a great day. And until next time, see you later.